What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. For today's video, I'll be going over some of the changes coming in patch 9.1 to Soul Ash, the legendary crafting currency. So basically it'll be some tips and tricks for farming it a little easier. Despite the new Soul Cinders currency that'll be coming out with 9.1, you will still need Soul Ash for crafting legendaries up to rank 4, or if you're making a new legendary from scratch, you will still need it for ranks 5 and 6. So knowing how to get your hands on more of it faster will prove handy if you want to craft extra legendaries for different specs or different needs. Okay, so two of the biggest things to know about patch 9.1 are that the drop rate of Soul Ash in Torghast is going to be way higher, and that you'll also be able to repeatedly earn Soul Ash as well. For the drop rate, we're looking at about a 50% increase in Soul Ash on layers 1 through 8, Plus, the new layers 9 through 12 will also award some Soul Ash. This basically means that if you're clearing layer 12 every week of every wing, then you'll be earning almost double the Soul Ash that you were in patches 9.0 and 905. This is already pretty sweet because it means you'll be able to craft a rank 4 legendary from scratch every 3 weeks, as long as you're doing layer 12 clears of each wing. Well, that's great and all, the fact you can actually farm Torghast layers for Soul Ash is even more potent, since it means if you really want your rank 4 legendary in a week, you can do it. Basically, how it works is when you clear a layer of Torghast for the first time that week, you'll earn the full amount of Soul Ash that you're expecting to earn. If you decide to re-clear that layer or any layers lower than it, you will still earn Soul Ash, however, it's a bit less. To be exact, as of now at least, you'll earn 20% of the Soul Ash that layer completion would normally give you. So as an example, let's say you jumped right into a layer 8 Torghast run for the week and you clear it. In patch 9.1, that layer 8 clear would give you 860 Soul Ash if it was your first one for the week. Now, you decide to run that layer 8 again of the same wing and clear it. Doing this will net you 172 Soul Ash and it can be repeated infinitely. While this would take quite a lot of Torghast runs, it means you can quite literally get all the Soul Ash you need in one day to craft a rank 4 legendary if you really, really wanted to. Now, what I've found in my own personal experience on the PTR is that you want to do whatever layer of Torghast you can as quickly as possible if you're just trying to farm Soul Ash. This means maybe doing something that's only like a layer 5 or a layer 6, for example, because these lower layers are much easier than trying to reclear the higher ones, and you'll be able to do them way, way faster. Using the same example of a layer 8 clear giving you 172 Soul Ash when you rerun it, a layer 6 clear would give you 146 Soul Ash, as that's 20% of 730. Depending on your class, how geared you are, and what anima powers you get, it can be exceptionally fast to just sneak or sprint through entire floors, avoiding as many enemies as possible so you can finish your run and get your Soul Ash. The amount of Soul Ash does not change based on how well you do the run, or how many points you get in the new scoring system, or anything like that. Meaning, if you can literally just stealth by things and only kill what you absolutely have to to finish the run, then you can easily have some Torghast runs completed in 5 minutes or less. It'll really come down to what level you're most capable of doing the speedrun style of Torghast at, but if you happen to be like a rogue or a druid or really anyone who can stealth, then your completion times can be pretty nutty. If needed, you can even just use invisibility potions every now and then if you're just trying to get a Torghast run down as fast as possible. Another bit of good info for Soul Ash farming is that you can use your alts to do it, and there is a new item sold by Bonesmith Airmir and Corthia, the packaged Soul Ash. This item costs 300 Soul Ash to purchase, and is a bind on account currency box that contains 250 Soul Ash. This does mean that you lose a little bit of Soul Ash by doing this conversion, but it also means you can farm the crap out of Soul Ash on your main to get your alts caught up, or you can use your army of alts to get Soul Ash for your main. This would only be really effective for your first clears of the week since those give substantially more than when you re-clear Torghast, but if you have a lot of alts then I can see this being an exceptionally time-saving way to just clear your top layer ones then funnel all that Soul Ash onto your main. There is a slight catch to this though, and it's that you must reach Renown level 44 and complete the fourth chapter of the Chains of Domination campaign, The Last Sigil. This is the chapter that has a lot to do with Bonesmith Aramir of the Necrolords and the Primus, so without spoiling too much, you need to finish that chapter before she'll show up as a vendor in Keeper's Respite, the new sanctuary area in Corthia. The best part about this is that you only have to do this chapter once for all your characters to have access to Bonesmith Aramir, because she will show up as a spectral vision form if you're on a character that hasn't completed the fourth chapter yet, as long as you've done it at least once on your account. A genuinely huge quality of life thing, as I was kind of worried that you'd have to do this on 
every character just to access this vendor, as she also has some other very important items that will be the topic of another video. Either way, I hope this little video on tips and tricks for soul ash farming proves useful to you. If so, please consider leaving a like or a comment, as it's tremendously helpful to the channel's growth, and it's the way that my YouTube overlords deem me worthy of getting my weekly ration of bread and water. As always, my appreciation and gratitude to all of my viewers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Shiba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.